Look, Brad, we've talked about um, what the value of having location data or geospatial information um, and live telemetry uh, available in one view at their fingertips um, already. But we, you know, there's a lot of different things that we can explore. Um, where do we go from here? You know, what are the challenges that you know, we're hearing ISPs uh, dealing with after they get this information both in map and on a on a pure data form? Right. So, so the fact that all the different departments can see this information in an ISP is is great. So, and if it's coming from a centralized platform, that's even better. But the issue is once the data is revealed and a decision needs to be made. We need to drill down into that data further so we have to start interacting with other systems and very often that data doesn't live in one system for an isp so you're saying they need to jump around to multiple systems once they kind of um, need to do some investigation from say their crm or to a network monitoring system they can't just do it from one uh, one sandbox one view that's exactly what I'm saying. So all these systems have to be integrated and maintained by an ISP. So if they're not integrated, they have to be entered twice, three times, like a swivel chair type of process. But if you have a single system and you have automation and field teams and CSRs and the NOC can all reach into it, then you're going to start reducing your repair and maintenance times up to you know 40 50 60 percent so it positively affects everyone in that whole chain trying to solve an issue so and here's a quick example um, if a knock team is looking at a map like the one you see here you can see all the different elements that i had i showed in the last video so you know in the left hand column i have all my active map layers right now so as i zoom in I'm starting to see some of these uncluster, and you can see the DMARC icons. Um, you can see some of the um, the different port information that's out there. You see, even see premises out here of non-subscribers. But if I get a call in from the NOC from somebody who's having an issue with their say their service, and we know it's an ONT issue, so say at this 80 Terence drive, um, I can create a work order and fire it off right from here. So as I fire off a work order, it's going to put me into a process. So in this software, I can adhere to any process in an ISP. However, we have what's called a TM forum process here, which is, you know, a group of, I don't know, a thousand or so telecom ISPs globally that are trying to simplify data and workflow. So everybody out there and all the vendors can start to have a baseline to work together and share data. So if I'm going to launch a work order against this just to test an ONT here, I'm going to red star a bunch of these um, pieces of data that I have to fill in. So and in doing so, I'm just going to select the person that lives at that address. It's going to start to pre-populate some of the information that comes directly from that account in the system. It's still unscheduled, but I need a work order type. So I'm just gonna troubleshoot this device. So we also need an incident type. That incident type is gonna be the device is having an issue. So this is the first step of my process, and now I'm into this work order process. So to move on to the next step here, I'm gonna save it. It's gonna take some time to save it, and as it is, it's pulling data from other places. Um, across the account and across this main system. So now I'm into my second stage here. And so you can see all this is pre-populated. Now I have an address which I'm gonna launch this work order against. And several settings in, in between here. So in my work order, I can move on to the next stage just by clicking this, and it's gonna work on to scheduling this order. Now in this order in particular, we're going to send this over to dispatch, so it's not actually going to be scheduled until dispatch receives it. And so this team is really just setting up all the information. But if I want to do things like enter a note to say like the ONT location is on the back side of the of the uh, the home, that's simple to do right here. So I'm going to go ahead and forward this, but first I need to put a piece of equipment on it. So I have materials and assets here. I can very quickly add a test ONT to this property 
as a technician goes out to handle this. Go ahead and save this. And moving right along in my process, now I'm all set up. I have my test ONT here. Of course, it's just a test, so the quantity and the pricing is zero. I can move on to my next stage, which is closing that order and sending it out to the next team that's going to handle it. So here ends our quick process and drilling down and trying to decipher which team's going to receive this order and fix the issue at the customer house. Yeah, I can see how that's super valuable, right? I mean, you basically have um, everybody working from the same sheet of music. Uh, you have access to a lot more information that may be in multiple systems. So what you showed us was there was the account information, there was the network design, you know, the location of where the ONT was. You were getting some telemetry around uh, from the network about performance, whether you know it's it's the ONT was off or if there's some other performance issue. Um, you have the scheduling capability here, and as you mentioned, you know, typically this would hand over to a dispatcher who would have the same view, or you could do the automa automated dispatching, right? So the great thing about you know what Dynamics 365 does is has schedule optimization and resource optimization algorithms. So they can see, okay, who's qualified to do this type of work, and then they can go see if they're available and then schedule the work, but then also ping back the customer, right? I mean, so again, tax back and say, hey, we notice there's a problem, we're gonna send somebody out, right? So that kind of eliminates a lot of the manual processes that we typically see. Um, and also we have access to all this inventory, right? So being able to identify the different assets, making sure that on the call, um, the, the field service folks have an understanding of what's uh, required uh, on the truck, right? That they need to go, and so they're not, you know, having to stop and and have a, a you know a, a false start to go to solve this problem. Um, it's pretty powerful. So uh, thank you for kind of walking us through that. I know there's even more that we'll go through on our next video, but I just uh, thought it'd be a great idea for us to uh, to kind of share this view. Absolutely, 360 degree view of the subscriber and the footprint.